Good morning and welcome to Prayer and Devotion. Uh, this is our second start um, today and uh, I played a song I wasn't allowed to. So if you're just coming on now or if you were on before, uh, we were listening to My Life is in Your Hands. And that was from, uh, that was the T Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir singing that off of their Be Glad album. But I'm not going to play it again because it'll stop. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that. That's one of my favorite songs. And it goes really well with today's devotion. Um, I see you're all coming back on. So that's good. It's good to be with all of you. Thank you for being patient. Um, today we started off with My Life is in Your Hands hands that uh, uh, my favorite version is Kirk Franklin's so if you get a chance you want to listen to my life is in your hands I invite you to do that but good morning and welcome to prayer and devotion on this Wednesday today is Wednesday June 21st um, and today's devotion comes from Psalm 31 and I'm going to be beginning in verse 14. So Psalm 31, 14. And our theme today is uh, my times, my life uh, is in God's hands. So perfect fit, except that we weren't allowed to play it. So I apologize. <laughs> it's good to be with all of you. Well, let me say good morning to you. Um, Good morning, Susan and Donna. It's good to have both of you here this morning. Welcome. Praying for you as we begin the day. And Blanca and Augusta, I'm glad you're both here. Praying for both of you. Good morning, Vinette. And good morning, Barbara. I'm glad you're both here. Praying for you as we start the day. And Gail and Renetta, welcome. Holding you both in prayer. Good morning, Jerry and Andrea. I'm glad you're both with us, praying for you this morning. And Shelly and Michelle, welcome. Holding you both in prayer as well. Um, I ask that you continue. I forgot to mention this yesterday. If you could hold in prayer, you'll let. Um, she went back in yesterday for the treatment again. Uh, so she's in the hospital right now and we're praying for her, praying everything is successful and she continues to heal. So uh, if you would keep her in prayer, that would be wonderful. So um, we're going to look at Psalm 31, beginning in verse 14, as you're turning there in your Bibles. My name is Cindy Stauffer. I'm blessed to serve as a pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. And I am glad to be able to start the day with all of you. So let's take a look at Psalm 31. Psalm 31, beginning in verse 14. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Do not um, let your face shine upon your servant. Not do not, but let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. My times are in your hands. So today's devotion comes from Joyce Meyer's Strength for Each Day, and it's entitled, when will my breakthrough come? When will my breakthrough come? She says, God gives us dreams and visions, hope for our lives, but God hides the exact timing of their manifestation. This God deserves, God, I'm sorry, this God reserves for God's wisdom. Why does God withhold the timing of our breakthrough from us? Waiting is definitely a test of our faith and it helps develop patience in us. Moses waited for 40 years. Joseph waited 13 years. And Abraham waited 25 years. I waited many long years to see my dreams come to past. 
And during that time, I asked thousands of times, when, God, when? And never got any answer except that my times were in God's hands. I eventually learned to trust that God's timing would be perfect. But until I did, I was frustrated and anxious. God must do many things to prepare us for the good things God has prepared for us. And we should trust God, trust God, God's process. If you are waiting for something right now and the waiting is frustrating you, I strongly encourage you to enjoy your journey because God will not be rushed. Every day that passes brings you closer, uh, one day closer to seeing your dreams come true. So enjoy the wait and remember that we inherit God's promises through faith and patience. Um, so one of the things that I find so interesting, and you probably heard a lot of this lately, but is this is this sense that we're always waiting, like the thing that we want most is down the road. If I can get past this time, if, if I can get through this week, if I can get to the end of this year, if I can just get to vacation, then everything will be fine. And, and or if I can just get that job or meet that person, then my life will have worth and meaning and purpose. And so we hold these things out in front of us and then we feel like we're always waiting, waiting for the better time to come, waiting for, for the windfall that, that makes everything okay and, and life better and, and safer and more comfortable. And here's the, pro here's the problem is if everything is out in front of us, um, even when we do reach the place, what I find is, even if we get to that place that we've been waiting for so long, seldom do we get there and say, this is it, this is it, life is perfect now, and everything after that is perfect. No, let's be honest, we get there and we say, okay, I guess this is okay, um, but now I want that thing out there. Um, and so we're always waiting. We're always waiting. Now scripture calls us for us to wait, but it's not a waiting as if this moment isn't worthy or have purpose. And so what does it then mean to wait? How do we wait expectantly? And how do we find joy in the midst of this day? And one of the, I think part of it is to be present and inquisitive, right? So as we're in the midst of waiting, we are looking around, seeking God, asking the questions, um, pushing ourselves to maybe see something more uh, it may be not what we've been waiting for, but it may be something else that God wants us to see. You know, maybe that dream that we've been, that we thought was going to answer all our prayers isn't really what God is leading us to. And so um, in college, we learned to, th or in seminary, we, we learned to theologically reflect which means that every situation we're in, we're asking, well, where's God in this? What does God want me to see? What, what can I learn more about this moment? And we do that really well with the big moments, but do we theologically reflect or, or do we God think, that's a shortened way, about the daily days that maybe don't feel so big or maybe feel like we're just waiting for the, for the thing that we really want. What if we could take time to say, 
okay, God, I'm in this place. I don't love it. It's not where I really want to be. But what do you want me to see? Show me something this day. Teach me something. Open my heart to see something new. This is, this is part of what it means to be a part of God's kingdom. We are asking, um, we are talking about opening ourselves up to see the fullness. It isn't just about what Pastor, what Cindy wants uh, this day, but what's happening around me? What are the good things? What are the challenges? What are the ways that I can be a part of um, bringing God's presence into other people's lives? Each day is a day to say, this day my life is in God's hands. My time is in God's hands. And so I'm not just waiting to get past it. I'm not just hoping for a better place. I am trusting that even in this moment, God has something for me to see and understand. There's something to give joy in, to be grateful for. This moment is a good moment. May not feel like it's where I wanna be, but there's something good in it this day. So that's my prayer for you today. Let's, let's do some God reflecting and, and see where we can encounter God in the midst of this day. Because friends, this is where God dwells. Not in the future. When we get to the future, it'll be the now. So right this moment is where God is present. So as we move into this time of prayer, I invite you to lift up. Maybe the word today is to surrender and trust that even when it feels like we're waiting, God has something for us to see. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this day, for this moment, for the gift of life, for your time, which is beyond our understanding of time, for your very presence in each of our lives, even when we are unaware. Forgive us, Lord, when we have been impatient when we quickly move from one thing to the next, thinking as if this moment isn't worthy enough, isn't valuable enough, doesn't bring us enough joy. Forgive us, Lord, when we don't wanna rush through the challenging and hard stuff and we miss your wisdom in the midst of it. We miss what you want us to see and learn and understand. In our, in our haste to jump to something else. Slow us down this day, Lord. Help us to see and understand. Help us to be um, curious, to ask questions, to seek you, even in the most mundane tasks of the day ahead. We want to see you, Lord. We want to know and understand you more fully. And so today, Lord, this moment, reveal yourselves to us and lead us so that we will understand the beauty of this moment that is in your hands. We ask all of this in your precious name, Lord Jesus, as together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us 
not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So today, where will you encounter God's presence? What is it that God wants you to see new this day? God loves you, my friends, and so do I. Have a very blessed day, and I will see you back here tomorrow.